the book of Leviticus 2730. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. <clears throat> and all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. Why was it important for the Lord to take responsibility for our seed and our fruit? Because in this seed and in this fruit was our salvation. We have heard more than once from pa Apostle Arkady that we receive salvation as a guarantee in the format of a seed so we can receive it as a possession in the format of the fruit of righteousness. And as we see, tithes is one of the uh, privileged, this is uh, a service that is concealed in mystery and it depends, our salvation depends upon it. All the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is the holy. It is holy to the Lord. Let us remember seven important components, principles of the commandment of tithes. Identifying tithes, how important it is, and how much our salvation depends on uh, on receiving and honoring God with our tithes. The first, the commandment of tithes tells man who the actual owner of this wealth is. 1 Corinthians 10.26 For the earth is the Lord's and all, it, and all its fullness. In this place of scripture, Apostle Paul, uh, he took these words from Prophet Moses when he brought the nation of Israel out of Egypt and when he had brought down the plagues from the Lord, he told the Pharaoh, so that you know that Egypt is not your land, the entire land, the entire earth is the Lord's. And what's important to know is that uh, on earth there's a specific plot of land, the promised land, the land of Israel. The Lord says that I continually look upon this land from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. This is the church of Jesus Christ and every individual person who is an organic member of the body of Christ. The Lord continuously is looking upon this land. And how do we determine whether, whether we are that land? We will have an Eden, and in our Eden, there will be a tree of life. Second, giving God your tithes gives man the opportunity to honor God and acknowledge his authority over him. Proverbs 3, 9, 10, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Honor the Lord with your possessions. The scriptures say don't buy God. You can't buy, buy God with anything. You have to honor Him. To honor Him is to acknowledge His authority over yourself and by acknowledging His authority, you give God your tithes and offerings. Third, giving your tithes gives man the opportunity to demonstrate his love or his obedience to God and gives God the opportunity to bless us with all spiritual blessings. Malachi 3.10 Bring all your tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this as the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And so, how is love demonstrated? Love is demonstrated in obedience. Jesus said, if you love me, follow or keep my commandments. And as we see, this is one of the most important commandments. It's linked to our seed, to our fruit, and our salvation, which needs to grow in us every day. Fourth, giving your tithes gives man the opportunity to come into the courts of the Lord. Fifth, giving your tithes gives man the opportunity to give God glory. Sixth, giving your tithes gives man the opportunity to worship God in the beauty of holiness. And so these, all of these are in one place of scripture. This is Psalm 96, 8. Give to the Lord the glory due His name. Bring an offering and come into His courts.
And so when we honor God with our tithes and offerings, we come into the courts of the Lord. A person who does not honor God with his tithes and offerings, when he would come into this court, his spirit would remain behind this te- behind that temple. He would bring his body, but his spirit would have no access to the revelations that in this case today will be offered and given. Also, this is the opportunity to give God glory when it, God doesn't when a man does not honor God with his tithes, but uh, maybe uh, performs beautiful prayers. Uh, this will not give God glory. And we will also worship in the beauty of holiness. To worship in the beauty of holiness is something only priests can do. When Moses clothed Aaron and into and his sons into holy garments, he said, these are garments for the beauty of holiness, so that you, in the beauty and glory of God, you can stand before God. And now imagine a person who does, who does not honor God in the beauty of holiness, and he thinks he's clothed into garments of righteousness. Of course, they may have a nice suit on or a nice dress, but when God sees them, he doesn't see the, them this way. He sees them in sackcloth and torn clothing because a person does not honor God in the beauty of holiness. These are the garments of righteousness. And seventh, giving your tithes gives God the opportunity to protect and heal man from the curse of poverty and give man control over money. 1 Timothy 6.10 For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And so if the root of all evil is love for money, then authority or control over your money is the root of all good. Right now we are going to sing a psalm to the Lord, and we will rejoice that we have the right before God to confirm our salvation, salvation that we received in the format of a seed so that we can receive it as a possession in the form of the fruit of righteousness. And for this, it is necessary to honor God with our tithes and our offerings, which the Lord has uh, made uh, dependent on our salvation. This depends, this affects our salvation and the Holy Spirit in our life. Without this service, without this form of service, we will not be able to pr- uh, progress or proceed forward. And so if you can imagine many services today, uh, are there many services today that <clears throat> speak of tithes and offerings? There are not many, unfortunately. Let us stand up and sing before the Lord. Oh 
allow me to again repeat after Pastor Arkady that every time when the nation of Israel honored God with their tithes and their offerings in the tabernacle of Moses or temple of Solomon, they were required as a command from Moses, which he received from God, to stretch out their hands over their tithes and proclaim a great proclamation, which we are now a part of as well. We are that Israel connected to the same roots, nourished by the same olive tree. We will do the same thing. Please stretch out your hands over your tithes and pray together with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I have separated my tithe from my house and have brought it into your temple so that you may have food within your house. I do not give in sorrow. I do not give in uncleanness. I do not give for the dead. I deeply believe in your unchanging word. And I am glad that I have the privilege to demonstrate my love and to acknowledge your authority. Now, according to your words, I pray. May your heavenly windows be open to me, and may your blessing come without end upon your redeemed nation. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. May you be blessed. Please be seated.